recording now. Sweet. All right, guys. Um, Want to say thanks to everybody for logging in today. Um, obviously, a big part of training um, this summer, we've been talking a lot on Zoom, um, going over different aspects of goaltending. And we've gone through everything from the technical aspects. Now we're starting to get into the mental aspect of goaltending. There are a lot of different things uh, with this position, but obviously the mental part is one of the least probably explored parts of, of the position. We're extremely lucky here to have uh, the opportunity for Justin Goldman to come on with us. Justin is um, the, uh, the founder of the Goalie Guild as well as the founder of Lift the Mask uh, Initiative. Um, he's a great resource for a lot of things. And to be completely honest, uh, I know my limitations as a coach myself. I know what I, I feel that I'm pretty good at and what things that I'm not as good at. And the mental side of the game is definitely something that I'm not as averse with. And I know Justin is, has got a ton of resources for this. Um, and on top of all of that, I mean, I know when I played myself, I dealt with an awful lot of anxiety issues when I played. I mean, I look now back at some of the basket case that, that I felt that I was at the time, and I probably should have talked to somebody at the time. And I wasn't lucky enough in that moment to really have resources around me. And in a lot of cases, I mean, I kind of look at it as, I mean, I, I kind of probably thought that I was weak mentally because of it. And I was always told that you got to be mentally strong to play this position. And I think that a lot of the, like, the words that people use when it comes to the mental side of this position makes it sound like that if you need help, you're, you're weak. And I think that is something that's, that's a very false statement. And um, like I said before, Justin's here to be able to talk to us about an awful lot. Give him the time. And, I mean, we're, we're really looking forward to anything that he can definitely give us. So, Justin, why don't you take it away? Yeah, awesome. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, Brian, for having me. It's always awesome to get a chance to just have an open conversation about mental health and mental performance for goalies. And that's literally what we're going to do. Um, I'm very unscripted. I don't over prepare for things like this. And I think that's important because I want everyone in here to know that like, we're just having a conversation. Um, and I think what, what X said is hundred percent true. Um, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Texas and didn't even know hockey existed until I was, you know, 11 or 12 years old and growing up, I just didn't have any resources. You know, I didn't have a goalie coach. I was lucky if I was able to hit the ice, um, once a week because there were only a few rinks built at the time. And, um, I was self-taught and the same goes true for the mental game. But ever since I was really young, even before I started playing hockey, just growing up, I was always a really reflective person. Like I always had conversations in my own mind. I was always kind of talking to myself when I was growing up on the farm, you know, taking care of the animals and stuff like that. And so I think just naturally, I really gravitated towards the goaltending position because we are on an island by ourselves when we're playing the game. You know, skaters can go have their 90 second shift or their 60 second shift. If they do something wrong, they go on the bench, they get a pat on the back from the coach. They say, it's okay, just go out there next time. For goalies, we don't get that chance, right? Like we don't have little headsets in our, in our helmet that where we got like, you know, positive reinforcement coming from the goalie coach every time we give up a goal or give up a bad rebound. Like we have to have that positive self-talk within ourselves. We have to find ways um, to motivate ourselves and keep ourselves thinking positively. And naturally we do that over the course of our lives, over the course of our careers, especially growing up, um, we figure out ways to do it and we become really resilient as a result. But at the same time, um, as X said, and as I'll be openly honest with you, like we do deal with a lot of different types of mental struggles, whether it's anxiety or depression or this spiral of negative thought. And the most important thing for you guys to understand now and forever is that that is totally normal for a goalie and it is totally okay. Like X said, he talks about some of the guys that he, you know, grew up playing with and played with during his professional career. And it's like, you will not find a goaltender that doesn't struggle with these things. It's natural. It's just the way it goes when you're a goaltender. And Hey, if you don't really feel any of those things and you're just mostly a positive guy, that's awesome. But for those of you that do struggle with the thoughts, the negativity, you know, failure, 
um, worrying about results, worrying about what your parents are going to say or what your friends think about you. Like the most important thing to know is as a goalie, and it's totally normal and it's totally fine. And we all deal with it in some way, shape or form. Um, so this understanding is kind of what led me to build this mental health platform for the goalie community. I think it was back in like early 2018, you know, I started doing research and, and for those of you that don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of like highlight this by saying, um, you know, the goalie guild has been around since 2009 and back in 2009, when I first started the goalie guild, it was just like a blog where I would post, you know, articles on goalies that I was watching and scouting reports on other goalies that I was seeing and just like random thoughts and observations I had on goalies. And back then, like, you know, late two thousands, there were really no goalie specific websites out there. So I kind of got lucky in the sense that no one was really covering goalies on a daily basis on social media or on the websites. And so the goalie guild kind of became that first brand to really, you know, provide analysis on pro goaltenders and, and goalies around the world um, on a daily basis. So my, my network grew really fast. Like I got a lot of followers on Twitter and um, I got opportunities to jump on podcasts and on radio stations to talk about goalies and, I was covering goalies for the Colorado avalanche where, you know, I live in Denver and I'm one of the emergency backups for the abs now. So um, I really got a chance to learn a lot from a lot of amazing goalie coaches. And so that's kind of how my career evolved. You know, I talked a little bit earlier about Eklund and I, um, you know, scouting goalies for USA hockey and my role uh, with the NTDP in Minnesota. And that led to the opportunity with USA hockey. So just through all the years and all the experiences that I've had, um, I've had the opportunity to write a couple books and some of you guys might have seen these books before, or maybe you have a copy, um, especially the one in the middle here, the power within was the first one that I wrote, um, with Mike Valley, who's a mentor of mine and was also, you know, a goalie coach for the Dallas stars for about six years. And what we did with these books is we really just wanted to kind of provide a resource for goalies in an area that was really lacking. And like Brian said, that's the mental game. Um, you can find all the content in the world on YouTube on, you know, technical stuff and technical skills and positioning and angles. But when it comes to the mental game, there's really not too much out there. And, you know, I'm just like Eklund, like I'm, I'm not a sports psychologist. I'm not a mental health expert. But I'm a guy that wants to make sure that the goalie community has the resources it needs to get the right type of help with the right type of situation that you're dealing with. And with these books that we wrote, it was great because all we did is sit down with NHL goaltenders and we talked to them about, you know, the struggles that they go through. What, it, what do you do when you give up a bad goal? What's it like to lose a Stanley Cup finals game? Um, what was some of the toughest parts that you went through, you know, on your journey becoming a professional athlete. And it was amazing because every goalie that we talked to, we realized that one, they all had really unique paths, which is something that you learn. Like every goalie is going to go through different things, different experiences, but every single goalie said that at some point in their career, they struggled with their mindset. They struggled to, you know, stay positive. They struggled with the worrying and the concerns and the negativity around, you know, the struggles that they had. And this reoccurring theme with every single NHL goalie that we talked to really stood out to us. And again, that's kind of what, you know, the experiences that we had and the things that we were learning and the stories that we were sharing led to me, led me to realize that we need to have a program um, that's nonprofit program completely dedicated to making sure that the goalie community had the resources it needed um, to get support and help for mental health. So that's basically what Lift the Mask is. Lift the Mask is a mental health and performance platform for the goalie community that was created by the Goalie Guild in 2018. And if you go to the website, it's liftthemask.com, you'll see all kinds of different resources that we provide. We have resources for um, goalies to connect with mental skills coaches. We have advocates and ambassadors. So if you're struggling with something and you want to connect with a pro goalie who's gone, you know, gone, some, gone through some issues in the past, you can connect directly with him or her and have a conversation. If you're looking for like real professional help from a sports psychologist, we have access to 
a lot of different resources and a lot of different companies that will provide that for you. Um, and so that's really what this is all about is just making sure that goalies everywhere know that there's a place that you can go if you are struggling and you need someone to talk to or you're looking for a specific type of resource that's going to help you get better and help you get back on track. Because uh, the reality is that we're all dealing with it. It's not just about you know, the one in five goalies that might be dealing with OCD or depression um, or is taking medication. It's about the five in five. It's about every single one of us. It's about having conversations about how we're feeling and where we struggle. And a lot of the different strategies that we've created in our own mind or through our own journeys that help us be better. And the more that we can share and have conversations about the things that we've gone through and how we've found ways to overcome them, we're just helping everyone else in the goalie community. We all get better. And that's really the point is to just normalize these conversations. Like I said, like I've dealt with anxiety ever since I first put on the pads. I've dealt with a lot of different experiences. Uh, you know, not a lot of people know this. I've written about it in, in my books a little bit, but I've had four near death experiences in my life and I'm 38 years old. So you can do the math there. And those are experiences that are really tough to talk about, but even just mentioning it to goalies makes me feel better about myself. Um, and it makes me realize that like, Hey, there's probably a goalie in this chat right now that's gone through something similar where they've had a really scary physical incident where their life was on the line. Um, and so I think that's really the key to this program is again, like, not just providing the resources that are all free, all on the website, but it's just about normalizing the conversation. And that's why like, you'll see those helmet stickers being tossed around and we give them away for free. And um, I do a lot of discussions like this where I just go out and talk about it because it helps me, um, it helps other goalies. And again, it helps destigmatize a lot of the issues that goalies may be dealing with you know, under the mask. Um, but we do have a really strong commitment in terms of the lift the mask program. And that's where it's kind of tied to, you know, the goalie guild, which is now a 501 C three nonprofit foundation. Um, and that commitment is that we will donate up to $100 for any goalie um, or goalie family in need of professional or licensed mental health care. So you go on our website, um, you fill out an anonymous form, um, we reply to that form. And then once you've been connected with, you know, a professional, um, whether it's a sports psychologist or it's a mental skills coach, or it's a licensed healthcare provider, we will supply you with a hundred dollars to help break down that financial barrier. Um, because we understand one, it's not always cheap. And two, maybe this is something that you want to try to work on yourself and you don't want to lean on your parents or you don't want to lean on someone else to flip that bill. We just provide this service to help again, get rid of that financial barrier and just make it that much easier for you to go out and get the help that you need. Um, so that's really the kind of blueprint for the lift the mask program is supply the free resources and then make sure that there are no financial barriers for any goalies out there to get the help that they need. Um, but we also, like I said, have some awesome ambassadors involved in our program. And these ambassadors are amazing individuals because Again, they may not be sports psychologists or have like, you know, these fancy degrees in, in mental health and mental performance. They're goalies just like you and I. They're goalies that are playing at the professional level that have gone through stuff that understand how important it is to work on the mental game and to work on mental health, just like you would work on any area of your technical game. Um, so you can see some of the goalies in the pictures here. The one on the bottom is Kyle Kaiser who is a Boston Bruins prospect. You guys should know him fairly well. Um, he just joined a couple months ago. Hey, this is a guy that just this past season went through some really tough situations with concussions. And he had to kind of figure out on his own how to kind of push through some of those dark days. He got better and he realized how important mental health and these conversations are to the goalie community. Called me up and said, hey man, this is what I went through this season. It was really tough. I don't think I've been through anything as tough as you know, this concussion that I had, um, you know, second or third year pro goalie. And, and we had a conversation about it. And I said, guess what, man, there's a lot of goalies out there that deal with concussions that aren't necessarily comfortable talking about it. But just the fact that you're willing to go on a podcast or jump on a zoom chat um, with a bunch of other goalies and talk about how hard it was is so helpful to those younger goalies because it normalizes the conversation. It gets them to understand that like, 
again, this is just something that we deal with as goaltenders. And, and, you know, I've had concussions. They're terrible. They're not fun. Um, but again, there are resources and there are ways to get help if you're just willing to reach out to someone and talk to someone um, or reach out and be willing to have, you know, someone help you. Um, so these ambassadors are awesome because again, they're going to, you know, you're going to be anonymous. Um, everything is private and, and they will help you. And their experiences as pro goaltenders is exactly what I think that younger goaltending generation needs so that they know and realize that like even the best goalies in the world are going through these things. Um, and so just to kind of continue, we do have, you know, like I said, a ton of resources. Some of those resources that we have is, you know, connection to the vast library of professionals that are involved with the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. Um, this is a newer foundation called the Athletes Against Anxiety and Depression. So that's another great resource that we're partnered with. And then this little orange graphic here is um, CPEX, which stands for the Center for Performance and Excellence, which is actually based here in Colorado. And it's a really awesome organization where you basically can walk in the door, um, anonymously sit down with a mental health care provider or consultant, and just discuss ways and strategies to get better with whatever you're dealing with. Um, so it's great because you don't really necessarily feel the pressure, like you have to write a whole um, article about what's wrong with you or answer a bunch of questions. Again, it's all focused on destigmatizing a lot of the issues around mental health by just having an open conversation with someone who's, you know, experienced and wants to see you get better. So this kind of leads me to probably the most fundamental thing that we'll talk about as goalies when it comes to mental health. And Brian hit the nail on the head. I mean, this is it right here. This is what we deal with. We know that goaltending is 90% mental but we only spend maybe 10% of our time on actually developing our mental skills. So that is an issue. And that's something that we are trying to change. Goalie coaches have gotten so much better at this, you know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, you just didn't talk about it. You know, when you got to the rink, you were focused on stopping pucks and you were focused on being as efficient as possible. And you were looking at movements and you were looking at angles you're looking at everything except how you felt and how you processed the game mentally. And now things are starting to shift. So Brian's bringing me on to this conversation. You talk about it a little bit more at the rink. You think about how much the mental game actually plays in to what you do when it comes time to stop pucks. And if you don't have a clear mind and you're not feeling good, or you're worried about things that are happening outside the rink in your life, you're not going to be at your best. That's just another one of those realities that we face as goaltenders. Um, and again, it's totally okay, but there's so much that we can be doing to improve our mental game, to improve the way that our mind performs, to improve the way that we prepare for a big game so that the worries and the anxiety and the negative thoughts that we do naturally have um, can be subsided or can be, you know, kind of quieted for a few hours so that you can just go out and enjoy the game that you love to play. So this is the ultimate paradox with goaltending. Um, and, and most of you guys I'd have to imagine have experienced something like this and maybe you've taken it upon yourself to find ways to work on your mental game. Or maybe this is something that having this conversation right here is going to trigger you to, you know, emphasize the mental game a little bit more. And if we can take those baby steps and, um, every day, you know, we're one drop closer to fill in that bucket with a little bit more balance in how we develop as goalies holistically. So it's not just 90% emphasis on the physical skills and 10% emphasis on the mental game, but it's more 50, 50, or even 75, 25, you're making progress. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. So the solution to this, at least what I've learned, um, again, as a non you know, sports psychologist as just a goalie guy that loves to learn and loves to help other goalies. The solution that I've come up with is that, you know, lift the mask and the goalie guild and everything I preach, we use mental performance as a way to open the door to have a conversation about mental health. Okay. I think that's where really goalie coaches 
have a huge advantage. The goalie coaches that I think really have success at the higher levels are the ones that understand that mental performance, those skills like focus and concentration and using our creativity. Those are the ways having, you know, focusing on those skills and really thinking about ways to develop those skills are going to naturally open the door to have conversations about how you're feeling. And if you are struggling with anxiety or depression, or you have, you know, an inkling of OCD, um, mental performance is really where it's at for goalies right now. And we're seeing that with like the emergence of, you know, VR training for goalies and vision training where you're working on a lot of different concentration drills or you're learning how to juggle. I mean, that's a mental performance skill. That's being able to, you know, dual task and use your brain to, you know, accomplish some pretty unique feats. Um, and so that's really the focus for me is, is, you know, I don't necessarily just dive right in and expect a goalie to open up about his or her fears or struggles or maybe some trauma that they've gone through in the past. I really just want to look at, you know, what do you think is really important as a goaltender to perform at your best, right? And when we talk about mental performance, these are six of probably the most important skills that we look at. It's cognitive flexibility in the terms of, you know, being able to look at who's coming off the bench for the next shift, but still be able to track a puck or um, understand the situation that's unfolding in front of you while you're also dialing in your positioning and your angles and your squareness. Focus is an obvious one. Attention's another one that's really obvious in terms of mental performance skill for a goaltender. Memory, I think, is a really important one. You may not think about it right away, but all the best goalies in the NHL have these like amazing memory libraries where they know exactly what kind of shot release or what's the go-to move for this third line guy on this team. Um, they build that memory through experience and memory is extremely important because if you can anticipate what a shooter is going to do, okay, it's going to make your life easier. Okay. And that's a mental skill. Like that's, that's cognitive performance in a nutshell. And we want to work on these skills every single day. Speed is another one. You know, that's like your reaction speed. How, how good are you at picking up shot releases? Okay. Creativity is probably my favorite one. Like I, I could spend a whole hour just talking about creativity, but in a general sense, creativity is just your ability to imagine different possibilities and new ways of solving the problems that we deal with every day. And when it comes to creativity, the first thing I talk about is just how we modify our gear every single day, going from, you know, regular toe ties to bungee toe ties, going from a regular strapping to a carry price strapping, um, all those different things that we do to modify our gear to perform better. That's also a mental skill. Okay. How do we adjust our stances? How do we, you know, adjust how we integrate into the post on an RVH in order to stop, you know, different handed shooters. Like we're problem solving all the time and we need to rely on that cognitive flexibility and that creativity to have success and to find ways to problem solve. So that's why we talk about mental performance. Okay. These skills that you see on the screen right here as an awesome way to start having discussions about mental health. Okay. And so again, that's going to destigmatize things. It's going to make it easier for you to have a conversation with your coach because if you've lost focus in a key game, okay, maybe it's not because you just aren't talented enough. Maybe it's just because you're dealing with, you know, schoolwork or you had a fight with one of your best friends and you feel bad about it. Okay. And those things are going to affect your perform your mental performance. And that's again, totally okay. Cause every single goalie at every single level, they're, play on the ice is going to be affected by what's going on in their personal lives. Okay. And if you can have an open conversation and a dialogue with your goalie coach and your goalie coach knows that you just had a fight with your wife, or like I said, you're struggling with certain stuff at school, or you're just not feeling good that day for whatever reason, he's going to have, he or she is going to have a little bit more understanding. Okay. When it comes time to break down the video. Okay it's going to be an easier time to get through that. Okay. And that's going to make it even easier to get back to feeling normal again. So I wanted to try something. I haven't done this too often. And I know there's, there's only about 13 of us I see in the chat room. Um, but what I would like for you guys to do now is to try going to this website. Okay. It's called menti.com. So you just go to www.menti.com. 
and type in the code you see right here, okay? And it's gonna pull up a box and it's gonna ask you, what are the five key mental skills you've developed as a goaltender or a goalie parent? Okay, so take a couple of minutes to do that right now if you're in front of a computer. And what I'm gonna do is pull up the results and share that with you guys. And it's anonymous too. So when you type in your answers and it shows up, it's not going to uh, show your name or anything. So just be honest, this is a pretty straightforward question, but I just love to see what kind of answers we get. And let's see here. What I'll probably have to do is stop sharing this screen, Eck, and then um, pull up the other one. So let me see. No problem at all, bud. Okay, so as the results start to kind of come in here, you'll see them pop up on the screen, or they should. Hopefully, uh, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so, like, what link are we supposed to go on once go, we get? Yeah, you can either go to just menti.com. So it's uh, www.menti.com. And then you type in the six digit code. Wait, like in the search place? Cause like there's a bunch of links that are popping up. Okay. Let me see. Oh, it looks like someone got it. So, so like, are you on a computer or are you on your phone? Phone. Okay. So if you're on your phone, just pull up a web browser and then type in www.menti.com. Yep. Okay, and then I'll tell you the code when you've got it pulled up. All right, I have it pulled up. Okay, so the code is 795879. Wait, so where do I type that in? It should be right on the main page. So if you pull up menti.com. Yeah. Is it asking you to punch in a code? No, but I mean, once I search it, once I search www.menti.com like which link from that place should i go yeah so like that is the website the website is menti.com so all I right i'm not too sure exactly how to explain it any other way let me think Could, um, you know like, if you like go on google right and then you yep. type in that it's not going to go straight to the place. It's going to go to like a place where there's a bunch of links of right. like suggested Nate, stuff. Nate, Nate, just don't go to Google. Yeah. All you got to do is just right there in the bar at the top, instead of going to Google, right at the top bar where you type in, let, let's say, masscrease.com, type in menti, M E N T I dot com. Yep. yep. And now, can you guys see how some of the results are popping up? So we're seeing like preparation is a pretty big one. And the bigger the word, the more times it's been typed in. So focus clearly seems to be one of the main mental skills goalies develop. Determination. I see poise. That's a good one. Attention. That's another good one. Attention and focus are pretty similar. Relaxation. I love seeing that one there. There's some more. I see determination, adaptive skills. That's awesome. Concentration. Okay. Eck, can you see kind of how the answers build? Yeah, I definitely do, man. That's pretty okay, cool. 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 So as you can see, there's a lot of common words. Focus seems to be one of the big ones. I love to see courage on there. Okay. I'll keep this up for one more minute and then I'll go back to uh, competitiveness. There we go. Preparation. Determination. I like that. Attention to detail. Focus level. So focus Goal setting is a really good one. Okay, awesome. 
So as you can see, if we go back to that other slide, I'm gonna stop sharing this one now. And go back to the slide deck. Okay, so as you can see, we all agree focus and memory and attention are pretty key mental skills. What's great about that is that when it comes to mental health, there's a lot of similarities in terms of how we focus, how we prepare. Those things are gonna impact your day-to-day -day life as well. So as you strengthen these skills that you know are important for goaltenders and to you know, have success on the ice, it's also going to strengthen your, your mental health as a whole. Okay. Cause when we're not feeling good or we're struggling or we're worrying, our focus isn't great. Okay. It's harder to prepare. It's harder to concentrate. It's definitely not easy to juggle when your mind's distracted by negative thoughts or, or other things that are going on in your life. Right. Being able to stay attentive during a game is tough. So Really, it's important, I think, for goalies to understand that like the skills that we need to be successful are also the, the skills that we need to live successfully and to live a happy life. We all know that we play some of our best hockey when we're happy. So what I wanted to do next is kind of share this video from Robin Leonard. And Robin's really become the face of mental health for goaltenders. And I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with his story, but if not, let's just go ahead and watch this video uh, real quick. Robin Leonard has also gone through a lot personally over the last six months to a year, and he wrote a very personal letter that was published in The Athletic not too long ago detailing the struggles that he's had with addiction and also realizing just recently that he's bipolar. He shared more of that story with us. Being diagnosed uh, bipolar, was tough. Um, you know, you always have this general perception of bipolar. I've heard it before, and you know, it's kind of been linked to this crazy, crazy type people. And at least that's been my my perception of it. And you know, when you watch TV and stuff like that, it's uh, that's the perception I get. Uh, but it's really not. And uh, you know, ever since I got it, just understand it's it's a serious uh, serious illness, but it's very easily treated. It's just hard to recognize if what you have. And uh, when I got the diagnosis, a lot of things clicked. Uh, it was like a piece of the puzzle that came in. I could all, all of a sudden see the pattern. I could see how it has affected me. And uh, in the end of the day, it's uh, it's a diagnosis, but it's not far from everything I've done. Everything I've done, I take full responsibility for. It's uh, I should have gotten help earlier. I, sh you know, things that I've been through and, and, and done myself it's and the, the person I've been it's uh, nothing but me uh, by getting the help uh, that I that I got it's uh, it's been a journey and uh, I'm in a totally new place uh, and I'm planning to stay in this place for a long time it's a big risk for me it's uh, not something you just throw out there it's uh, it, for me letting this out I thought of serious uh, repercussions for my career not knowing what people think about this what other GM's future future contracts whatever you know it's uh, it's a big risk for for me to come out with this and I just feel like other players in the league they might have the same issue being around for a while uh, just it's uh, you can get through it you, you, you as long as you can get help you're willing to get help you can get through it and also to other people young people growing up you get don't wait get help as early as possible and uh, that's kind of why i let it out cool so it's you know um, robin is is uh a, a very brave individual to you know, kind of at the point in his career where um, <clears throat> he wasn't sure if he was going to, you know, develop into a starting goaltender who's playing 60 games and had a multi-year contract or a guy that was going to be, you know, a career minor leaguer. And even though he was facing those issues, whether, you know, how was he going to stick in the league or um, whatever the case may be in terms of his, his career, like he said, he knew he still had to come out and share what he was going through and get help. And, um, his message is amazing. Um, he's a, 
very, very brave individual. It was amazing to see him win the Masterton trophy and still to this day um, advocate for mental health through this, uh, this, this program that is also a partners of ours um, called the same here movement. And it's on his mask. It's on his leg pads. Now um, it's on his like, you know, avatar on Instagram and, and Twitter. And um, it's such a great message because same here is really all about just realizing that we all face challenges every single day. And Robin is one of those guys that even though he may have, you know, OCD um, and bipolar disorder, um, it doesn't mean he still can't have success on the ice and, and in other areas of his life. And I think that's another really important message is um, not every elite athlete um, just has this clean, shiny, perfect life. You know, everyone's struggling with different things in different areas of their lives, whether it's, you know, internal or external. And not only is it okay, but like you can get help and you can still have success and you can still be happy and um, have a great life, even though you might be diagnosed with a mental illness. And I think that's what Robin's really proving right now is that, um, yeah, there's probably a lot of people that think he can't, you know, perform at the higher level, um, that think he can't be a starting goalie because he has been diagnosed with this and he takes medication and there's always a chance he could have a relapse. I mean, these are the questions and the issues that I think NHL teams are, are struggling with when it comes to, you know, possibly signing him. But at the end of the day, you look at his statistics he's one of the best goalies in the league, you know, safe percentage on, you know, in different situations. And, um, you know, we interviewed him for, for the book that Mike and I are writing right now, which is the power within two. We interviewed him and, and not a lot of people know this about Robin, but he is one of the best goalies at pre-scouting the opposition. Like he spends hours breaking down video of players and learning their tendencies. And if you watch Robin and, and you're a big fan um, if you're a big fan of Robin and you notice like he makes some different saves, like he's pretty unpredictable. He'll flash, you know, one knee down save. He'll do two pad stack. He'll, um, lunge out with this stick. And that's just because he's so good at pre-scouting and he knows what guys are going to do. And that goes back to like the idea of like the mental performance skill of memory, um, and just finding different ways to be successful, even though you may be struggling with different things, um, in your own mind. And Robin's found ways to still have success despite the battles that he has. And it may not look the greatest on the ice. He may not be the most technically polished or the smoothest or the most flexible, but man, you cannot argue with the results. Um, and it's going to be really exciting to see what he can do with Vegas in the playoffs um, with him and Flurry. So, Justin, one thing yeah. with uh, Robin this year that really struck with me. Um, when he came out and he was really honest, uh, one of those games at the end of the game after a shootout loss, and I, I, it actually might have been against the Bruins in which the game that they ended up losing it. He was really upset because they had like a late goal scored that they ended up losing the lead. And he, he, they talked about it after and he was just like honest. He was really open. He's like, I stink at, at, at shootouts. All of my strengths as a goalie are essentially taken away from me in a shootout and how he didn't like them. But it, I mean, it's one of those things where he just came out and said it. He talked about the fact that there was something he didn't like that, that, was, that, that was happening. And he talked about his weaknesses. Like, he, he was open about it. Like, how many goalies honestly feel, like, like, strong enough inside to be able to say, this is my weakness, and just talk to, about, like, throw it out there on a the table and be able to say, this is what I stink at. And yeah. like he did not it was just kind of blew my mind listening to him talk about it. I wish I had the clip of it here right now. It'd be like, it just, it, it was awesome. Yeah. I should have pulled that up because that's great. I remember when that happened and um, yeah, I mean, you just won't find, he's an intimidating dude. You know, he's, he's a big dude. Who's just like, he looks, he looks like he's got daggers in his eyes, even when he's the happiest guy in the world. Cause that's, he's so ultra competitive and he's a fierce dude. And we've seen him, you know, uh, throw the knuckles in the AHL and, and stuff like that. And, and mm. he's also brutally honest, you know, and that's, what's so refreshing about him. That's why he's just so great for, um, you know, not just the goaltending position as a whole, but, but in terms of like being able to open up about that stuff and not being afraid of what media is going to say or what, you know, 30 other GMs are thinking like, 
if he knows he's not good at something, like being able to admit it is almost the first step to finding ways to improve as well. And I think that's where the whole kind of metaphor of lift the mask comes into play is like, we spend our lives behind a mask, hiding our true emotions. That's how we're conditioned to be as goalies. We're conditioned to be even keeled, right? Like don't get too high. Don't get too low. Yeah. That's important, but you also can't forget that like having, you know, actual emotions, it's okay to share them. Like it's okay to swing your stick against the, post if you've had a bad game if that's how you need to let out that anger it's more about the awareness the situational awareness and the emotional awareness and the more you understand yourself like robin does and you know when you can be honest and you know when you can you know continue to work on things that's the most important thing for a goalie to understand is that you have to have that like real dedication to knowing yourself and knowing that you can always improve and you can always be better and that's why we always talk about being 1% better, like get 1% better every day. Um, Cause if you're working towards solutions and you're finding ways to, you know, push the right buttons and have these strategies in place for, you know, when you are dealing with anger or you are dealing with frustration or you can't seem to pull yourself out of that quicksand of negative thoughts, then, you know, that's, that's really what it's all about. I think as a goaltender who's trying to, you know, reach the next level. Um, it's not all just going to come from getting faster with your footwork or being better on your edges. Um, you can find those 1% at, you know, advantages all within your own mind. And, and I think that's what Robin's really keyed in on and, and he's amazing at it. And, um, part of this whole conversation, I think is understanding that, um, mental health is not black and white. Mental health is on a spectrum. And I think as goalies, we probably understand this and we learn this younger than a lot of other people because we can go through the whole darn spectrum in a single game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can give up a goal on the first shot and you're really fluctuating and struggling and you're sinking. And then boom, all of a sudden it's a two on O and you've got no choice, but to come up with a big save, you make that huge save and your team goes back down the other end and scores. And all of a sudden you're, you know, on the left side of the spectrum, you're surviving, you're gliding, you're thriving, and it turns out to be a great game and you celebrate afterwards and you just feel that release right after the game. Like, oh man, I was really like, I was really battling it in that first period, but man, I just found a way to survive and glide and thrive and we ended up winning the game. So I think again, naturally as goaltenders, we experience this every single day and every single time we're on the ice, that is the nature of the position. Um, which is, you know, there's a double-edged sword there on one side, you know, it can lead to anxieties. It can lead to, you know, negative thoughts and struggling with, you know, the anxiety and how you feel. Um, but on the flip side, again, if you have that awareness, it can also develop amazing resiliency. And I think being able to have the conversations about how you feel in certain situations is the most important thing you can do. Okay. And that's, I think, clearly what we're preaching here. Um, but at the same time, it's also like, it's only going to help you because there are coaches out there that might be experiencing similar things. Or, you know, if it is something where you're showing some signs of, of like, um, you know, an actual illness or something that needs to be diagnosed, you can get the help that you need and you can find ways to treat it, whether it's medication or it's, um, you know, holistic therapy or it's mindfulness practices like yoga and meditation. There are so many amazing tools out there at your disposal, especially nowadays with, you know, being able to use um, apps on your phone. I mean, there's all kinds of awesome apps on your phone to help calm nerves, um, to help with meditation um, that are just free and right at your fingertips. So, just being able to lean on that and not just bottling it all up and not just trying to suppress it and hope that things are going to get better. Be willing to try new things, be willing to have the conversations because guarantee you, if you're talking to a goalie coach like Eck, who's got experience, he's probably felt something similar. And, and if not, you get the help that you need. You reach out to a resource or a professional and, and there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, I see a mental health coach, I, I've gone through the process. I've been through it and I went into it like the sucks. I hate having to face the demons that I face. I hate having to deal with like 
the trauma I experienced from these near death experiences, but I would much rather talk to someone and get help than just deal with it in my own mind every day. Cause like it's, it's not easy and you have to face those fears eventually. And when you do, you, you come out of it so much more confident and it does help your game. It does make you a better goalie on the ice because you're just a little bit more relaxed. There's a little bit less weighing on you and that's always going to make you perform better. Um, let's keep going here. One more video I wanted to, to share is um, a story from Corey Hirsch. And Corey Hirsch, a little bit of an older goaltender, so you guys probably have never seen him play, but he was a former goalie coach for the St. Louis Blues, and now he's a big-time um, broadcaster on uh, Sportsnet in Canada. And he's another one of those professional goalies that has been really vocal about mental health and mental illness, and I think he's got a really um, positive message for everyone. got drafted by the New York Rangers in 19, I think it was 1991. <laughs> I can't even remember. I'm not, I guess I'm not old now. Um, but uh, started with the New York Rangers and then probably after the Olympics in 1994, um, started having uh, debilitating panic attacks. Uh, eventually I would get diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. I got traded to Vancouver, um, but was, you know, playing with a, a mental illness that I was hiding. And then ultimately, like any other mental illness or, or any other physical injury, you have to deal with it. And when I was with Vancouver um, in my second season, a psychologist came to my house um, and within probably 15, 20 minutes diagnosed me with obsessive compulsive disorder. And that moment was um, after hiding for three years and not knowing what's going on and, and suffering, um, it was like a huge piano fell off my back, that there was a name for it, that it was treatable. Um, that there was a diagnosis and, and not that it was curable, um, but that, you know, there was, there was help available and that I would go on to live, be able to live a, good, a, a great life. And, and I have been able to, I've played in the National Hockey League. I've coached as a goalie coach in the National Hockey League. I'm an NHL broadcaster now. Uh, mental illness does not mean uh, you're doomed to a life of, of failure. Uh, there are millions of successful people out there that have mental illness. I feel what needs to be done with our system is is that we need to give our, our youth the information that they need to be able to help themselves. Uh, you know, we, we teach uh, all sorts of different sort of uh, health education in class, but no one really teaches on mental health. Um, so not giving them the information, we're doing them a disservice. And, and that's one of my things is why wasn't I given that information? That you know, mental health is a real thing and that, that really, um, if something goes on with you, that to reach out and get help, um, that help is available. So withholding that information from our youth is um, something that uh, I think is wrong and that it needs to change. They need the information to be able to help themselves. So Corey Hirsch is awesome because he's become a real advocate for, um, for mental health. And, and just like he said, just because um, you might be diagnosed with OCD or bipolar disorder or any of these other um, mental illnesses does not mean you, can, you can't get treatment, doesn't mean you can't get better, doesn't mean you can't have success. And I think that's really important to understand is that um, even if you're silently struggling right now, it's the best thing you can do is just realize that there are people that will help you that can help you. And there are resources available as a goaltender. Um, and, and again, like, I think it's just important that, um, you realize that it's not just me preaching these things, pro goalies are preaching these things as well. And when you look at, uh, for example, a goalie like Ben Bishop, and this is a quote that he gave in the book, embracing the grind. And I think it's a really important lesson again to realize that like skills only going to take you so far. And he says it right here with this quote, a lot of younger guys think they're ready uh, to play at the professional level or play in college because they have all the physical tools, but that's only half the battle. Okay. And the other half is really having a strong mental game. And I don't necessarily mean strong mental game as in mental toughness, but again, the awareness and the ability to, um, be honest with yourself and know that if you are struggling, um, suppressing it and hiding it is only going to make things worse and being able to take that step while it isn't easy. Trust me. I know it's not easy, but taking that step to get help by talking to someone, um, is one of the best things you can do again, not just for your mental health, but for your mental performance as a goaltender. And if you want to be a better goaltender, mental health is important. Okay. So 
that's uh that's kind of it i had one more quote here i wanted to share again this is from the same book um embracing the grind because again it kind of blends the idea that um you know goalies live in their own mind we understand that we know what it's like to be on an island we understand how important it is to have that positive self-talk and to be able to you know focus on the good things as opposed to worrying about the past or the bad things or that goal you just gave up and this was from Henrik Lundqvist and um it's a great quote and it's you know it's the day we asked him like what is you know what is what is it being a goaltender like what's the hard part and this is it it's the daily battle against your mind body surroundings and emotions it's a lifelong process of developing the skill, skills needed to play and live at your best on a daily basis no matter the cost as it goes in life whether in success or failure we learn this lesson goaltending is a battle that is never truly won or lost and i love that last line because i think it's really important to understand that like even when you're playing at your best and everything's going right you still got to show up the next day and prove yourself okay and that takes strong mental game even when things are at their worst okay you can still go out the next day and have an awesome practice awesome game okay so that battle as a goaltender mentally and physically and emotionally is never truly won or lost. You're always just constantly trying to be better, be better, be better, be better the next day. And, and that's going to wear you down. It's going to cause, you know, some negative emotions. And that's again, totally okay. Cause there are resources and there's people in place to help you. Um, so that's all I have. What I thought I would do real quickly because I think we only got a few minutes left. Um, I'm going to actually show you guys the Lift the Mask website just so you know where to go to get the resources, okay? Um, and that way, at least you've seen the website and you know, like, okay, this is where I can go um, whenever you need it. So let me stop sharing, and then I will pull up the actual website. I think it's here. Okay, let's see. Um, can you guys, uh, see the homepage right now? Yes, we can. Cool. So this is the homepage for lift the mask, the actual website. And it's super, super easy. You literally can go to connect. Um, and this is where you can get connected to ambassadors, coaches, and providers. So the ambassadors are going to be your, you know, pro level goalie coaches, um, that have allowed us to basically post their social. Um, and you can directly contact these guys whenever you feel like you need someone to talk to or someone to listen. Uh, ben Meisner, awesome guy. He had another story that was kind of similar to Robin Leonard's um, that came out in the Players' Tribune a couple years ago. Um, we've got Evan Cowley, who just finished playing in Denmark, but a good friend of mine who's here, you know, lives locally in Denver and went to the University of Denver. Kelsey Newman from the NWHL, you know, just some great, awesome goalies um, that have been through things before and understand how important it is to be able to talk and have someone to lean on. So those ambassadors, their contact info is right there. You can send them a DM on Instagram or Twitter um, or reach out to them on Facebook, whatever you need. Um, we also have like a group of coaches that, um, again, may not be professionals, but understand again how important it is to have someone to talk to about the mental game and again these are guys that you can reach out to at any time and then if you are ready um, to talk to a professional provider the ones that we have listed on our website have goaltending backgrounds okay which is really really important for our program i think as a goalie you always feel more comfortable talking to a goalie um, but it's also really important to talk to, you know, if you're really struggling with an actual professional. So there's not too many of them out there in the world, but we found, you know, six or seven really good ones. These are professional licensed mental health care workers, um, whether they're sports psychologists or they're consultants. Um, they are licensed to, you know, provide you with mental health therapy and mental health care. And again, if you want to reach out to any of them and there's a charge associated with getting help, all you have to do is apply for that hundred dollars and um, we'll push it through as quickly as possible. And if you want to reach out and you want to take advantage of that, again, same thing right under that connect tab. Um, you just go to the reach out page. You submit this really simple form. Okay. It's totally anonymous. We ask for your name, um, but no one sees it. 
okay? <clears throat> Except basically myself and the professional that we connect you with, okay? And everything is 100% confidential. Um, and so there's, there's basically how you can reach out, reach out to us privately. Um, and then, you know, we obviously provide a lot of resources as well. So if you've never actually, you know, gotten professional help before and you're not really too sure what that process looks like um, or what that experience is like, we actually have, you know, a pretty solid article that just gives you basically a step-by-step -step process on what it's like when you actually sit down with someone to talk about, you know, how you're feeling or something that you might be struggling with. So um, that's, that's really the resource. This is what the website looks like. Again, it's just all of it is there for you to, to get the help that you need. And um, of course you can always just reach out to me privately. I'll put my email address in the chat room here. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. I, I think that's all I got, Brian. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can hang around for a few minutes and, and answer some questions. Um, I think we pretty much hammered home all the most dude, important stuff. So dude, I can't, I cannot thank you enough for doing this. Like, honestly, like I, I sat here and I started writing down different, uh, different questions myself and like things that I, that I it like spark my interest. Like, like right off the bat, it's like as a coach myself, how can I help build, build more mental skills in like in, in the goalies or into the lessons that we're doing beyond just the physical stuff that we do on a daily basis? How can we do more? And I mean, it, it's obviously this is it's it's always going to be an open ended thing. But I think that for everybody that's that, that is ever wanted to explore being a goalie, they've got to understand that there's always something and that, that quote that you have get one percent better. Like this is something that you can do from home. This is something you can do during COVID that you can sit there and work on your mental game. Um, and you don't have to physically be on ice in order to do it. It's just like, I, like honestly, like so much of this stuff and the mental health aspects of it, like it just, like it really rings true. Like I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, no worries. And I mean, hundred percent, like it's amazing the technology that's out there right now. And it's amazing what you can do from the comfort of your own home. And, and like, let's face it, I didn't talk to anyone about one of the experiences I went through for six or seven years. And that was, that was like, now that I look back, like, again, as goalies, we are conditioned to not show emotion. Like we suppress it naturally because that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to look totally stoic, always in control, always, you know, the most confident guy or girl on the ice. And like, man, let's face it. Like, that's just not reality. You know, like that's just we deal with shit all the time, every single day of our lives. You know what I mean? And so I think that's, that's like the paradox that we deal with. And, 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 and so when it comes to like, that's why it's so cool to use mental performance as a way to discuss mental health. Cause like, of course I want to get better at focusing on, you know, tracking pucks. Of course I want to get better at, you know, reading plays and, and being able to like hold my attention span for longer when I'm really, really physically tired um, and, and it's amazing because there's so much great mindfulness, um, stuff out there on the web and out there on YouTube. And there's people out there like myself and guys like Teddy Monick and other goalie coaches that have the experience and, and really have the expertise to talk about these things and give you those strategies. And that's, that's really all it is at the end of the day. Like you're just coming up with strategies and ways to combat, um, the thoughts that run through your head or, the worries that you have about performing at your best. And again, like every book that I've written, every single NHL goalie that I've talked to struggles with worrying. I, str I worry, I worry every single game, man. Like I worry about like who's watching and who's seeing me. I worry if I can actually handle being an emergency backup goal to me. Like, God forbid I have to step in and face McKinnon. Are you kidding me? Like I like, I would fear for my life. You know what I mean? Like that's just the reality of the situation that I'm in and I'm okay saying that, you know, I'm okay. Like saying like there are situations where I really struggle when it's a three, three game. I don't care if it's beer league or, you know, again, someone's watching in the stands, like I'm going to have those worrying thoughts and I have found ways to, I've found strategies to combat that. I found ways to get around that so that I can enjoy the game. Cause when I just enjoy playing, I play great. It's when I let those negative thoughts take over and I can't get out of that cycle 
that really starts to constrict my muscles and then I don't track well and then I don't get good push off my inside edge. And it's all, it all starts right up here. So, um, I feel you, man. I mean, it's, I sit there and I look back when I played and I mean, I noticed it when I hit college, when the games all of a sudden felt like it, they, they had a lot more pressure and especially at the pro level, I noticed that like in games that we were getting, that we were losing, like we were down four two late in the game, like we were working to win. I just remember like getting off the ice and I felt like inside, like I was upset. I was mad that we lost. Like I, I dealt with that. But when, when it came to the, the games that we won, and I never understood why. The ones that were like the 3-2 game, like you're talking about, you find a way to win in a shootout. I'd get off the ice. And I had so much pent up emotion, I actually puked. Like, and it would be after pretty much every game that we won. There's just so much anxiety, so much pressure that's on you throughout the entire game from college on. Every game that we, that we would end up winning, I'd end up like in the bathroom. And it was just like, I, I never understood what was going on. And like, I, I thought there was something physically wrong. Like I was seeing allergies, thinking that there might be allergies. But it's just like, it, it's just crazy. Like when you stop and you think about this, this is something that everybody deals with. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there isn't a goalie out there. Like they're standing there at the national anthem, all right? And they're staring off. Like you think Tuka Rask has played so many games in his career that he probably sits there and laughs off playing a preseason game. I guarantee, even for preseason games, Tuki gets the, the butterflies in his belly. Oh, yeah. He starts yeah. he starts feeling it. And it's and it's okay to know that you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most important thing. And it's funny because I remember when we talked to Scott Darling, and everyone's probably pretty familiar with Scott Darling's story. Um, kind of a guy like Robin Leonard. And and Scott talks about exactly the same thing. Like he used to puke before every game. And and you know, for a while he tried to hide it, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to like fix my gear or something. He'd go off and he'd puke. And then like I think it was Corey Crawford, like heard him puking and he's like what the heck and then Corey Crawford just laughed he's like Psh, that's no big deal man like you know and that was a huge thing for Scott Darling to know that like the players found out about it but they didn't care because they understood of course you're nervous like this is a huge game for you or whatever the case may be and like the players laughed about it as a way to make him feel better like dude don't worry about it like guys puke before games all the time you know like it's a pretty common thing and I get a lot of emails from parents that um, say, yeah, my kid, he's only 12 years old and, and he's now all of a sudden, like he's puking before games. And it's like the parents feel really bad about it. And the kid feels really bad. Like there's something wrong with him on the inside. And it's like, you just need to know it's okay. Cause just because you have this issue or you do something wrong, or you have a bad thought does not mean there is something wrong with you. It just means you're normal like everyone else and you've got to find a strategy or you've got to find a way to overcome it and deal with it. And that's basically what goaltending is, is problem solving. Like you problem solve when you work on your angles and your box control and your coverage. And these are all tangible problems that you're solving. But when you deal with emotions and negative thoughts and bad feelings and worrying, like it's just another problem like you see on the ice and you just find a way to solve it. And there's a lot of amazing ways that you can solve these things and come up with strategies. And, and that's why talking to pro goalies is great because they all deal with the same things, but they all have different twists on how they solve it. For example, you were talking about um, um, Tuco, you know, during the national anthem, we talked to Cal Peterson and Cal Peterson has some awesome strategies. I can see why he's going to be a really good NHL goalie for a long time. So what he does when he's dealing with nerves before a game, he stares right at the flag. And he does this visualization drill where he looks at all the stars and counts all the stars on the flag, no matter how far it is. And it's just something that he does to help relax himself and get his mind away from like, Oh shit, what's going to happen this game. Oh shit. I'm going to have to deal with, you know, McKinnon Landis Skog Ronton in line tonight. And he just focuses on the stars on the flag and he goes through the numbers and he does it diagonally. And then he does it vertically and horizontally and then the national anthem's over and he's like, okay, time to go skate. Now he just goes in the net. Um, one other strategy I'll care, I'll share with you from, from Cal Peterson that I loved is he's got this quote, this like mantra, um, this verbal cue. And anytime he's faced with a tough situation, let's say it's like 
one of his first NHL games and he's sitting on the bench and all of a sudden he's getting the call to go in. He'll say to himself, well, shit can't get out of this one. You know, and it's like, it's like he says that to himself and you think like, that's so true. There's nothing you can do about this moment. You're getting called to go out and perform. There's nothing you can do about it. You might as well go make it a good game. You know, like, well, I can't get out of this one. Might as well make the best of it. You know what I mean? Like you're dealt the cards that you're dealt. You might as well try to make the best hand you can out of it. And I just thought, I was like, man, I've heard so many different ways to like overcome the nerves and stuff. And I've never heard one quite like that. And I just thought it was awesome. And, and that's what goaltending is, is finding your own strategies and your own ways to, you know, deal with the things that we deal with. That's totally normal. So. That's awesome, man. I love it. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it, we're, it's such an individual position. I mean, that's why I, I like, I love seeing the individuality in the equipment and the helmets and the paint jobs, not always just like, Hey, I play for the Bruins. So I'm going to put a bear on my helmet. Having <laughs> something that, that, that is an individual because it is such an Island position. Like you, you just, you've nailed it throughout this entire talk. Cool. Um, well, I'm is, glad I was able to help. Like I said, I put my email in there. Um, I think more and more goalie coaches are, are doing the things that you're doing, Brian, where you're like willing to get guys on and have a conversation. You don't need a hundred people in the room. It doesn't matter about how many guys hear the message. If you record it, that's great because now you've always got the message. But even if you get through to one kid, it makes all the difference in the world because that one kid is going to go help another kid and that other kid's going to help another kid. And that's why we say every drop counts. So that's one of the big ones for me with lift the mask is every drop counts. Anytime you can hand out a helmet sticker to a kid or just say one positive thing or you know, help a teammate when you know he or she is struggling and just give them that positive reinforcement and be like, Hey man, it's all, it's all good. Like, don't worry. Like that is the, those little things go a really long way. And, and that's going to help influence that kid that you help to go in, you know, help another kid. So every drop counts and um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out if anyone's struggling with anything, just, you know, lean on the resources that you have, whether it's Eck or myself, um, we're here to help. Absolutely. And, and how could I get, uh, get my hands on some so that I can help uh, some of those stickers and, and hand them out? To yeah. Yeah. So well. just, yeah, just email me your mailing address and I'll just send you like 50. I've got awesome. I've got a ton. So yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to get. You can hand them out to kids and uh, they go a long way for sure. Like it just, it's just a simple message to just say like, you know what, same here. Like we're all dealing with stuff. It's all good in the hood and, and there's ways to get better. So awesome. Cool. I really appreciate it, man. And obviously guys, I really appreciate everybody coming on. And I mean, it, like obviously Justin's awesome with being able to share his email address. And at the same time, if you feel like that you want to reach out to me and we could talk as well offline or away from the rink, I mean, you just let me know. I'm here to help any way I can. I know Justin, I know Lenny's on the call as well. And I know that he would love to help out any way we can. So feel free. The resources are there. Justin's pointed us that direction as well. We're here to help. And if you guys need anything, we're here. All right. So Justin, I can't thank you enough, man. Um, like I, I can't say it enough. Like I really do appreciate it. And guys, we'll, uh, we'll be back at the rink real soon. We'll be able to, uh, to keep crushing it. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Take care guys. Thank you. See you guys. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you.